In this video, I have picked some of the most common phrases you'll hear pretty much every narcissist say. And if you know more that I don't mention here, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Number one, you are so dramatic. It's extremely typical of a narcissist to minimize your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. It's also extremely like them to downplay all of your worries, fears, and concerns, especially about them and what they're up to and your relationship or friendship with this person. And you'll hear those very classic phrases like, wow, you're really being over the top about this. You're really blowing this way out of proportion. It's not that serious. It's not that big of a deal. I don't know why you're worried about this. This is stupid. And it's something that makes you feel like you're making far too much out of a situation. And that can cause you to second guess yourself. Minimizing behavior also conditions people to walk on eggshells and be careful about what they bring up and what they don't in the future. The more quiet you are about what's bothering you, frankly, the happier a narcissist is. Number two, that's not good enough. It's totally in the nature of a narcissist not only to bring nothing to the table in a relationship of any kind, but to also scoff at what is given and presented to them and act as if it's not good enough. And very overused phrases like, oh, wow, that's it? Really? Oh, okay. Um, I thought there was more than that. Or no, that's not going to cut it. Something like, oh, is this, is this the best you can do? It's very painful. It's a form of devaluing. And upon hearing really harsh criticism like this, a lot of survivors try to jump through hoops and do even more for this person when they might already be overextending themselves enough. And again, not getting anything in return from this person, worst of all, Not even a thank you. Number three, some sort of combination of this is all your fault and or you made me do this. Don't you just love when a grown ass person tells you that you are responsible for their really unacceptable, disgusting behavior or their really poor choices or their really poor coping mechanisms. All narcissists will try to spin things and resort to blame shifting so that they don't have to actually take accountability for what they've done. And I've shared my own story of how I was told that I was cheated on because it was meant to hurt me. That story then very quickly changed to, well, it was your fault that you got cheated on because you didn't spend enough time with me. And let's just skip over the part where he never said I didn't spend enough time with him and When I tried to spend time, I got flaked on or forgotten. But anyway, so you'll hear the, you made me do it. This is your fault. You don't understand. I didn't have any other choice. Or even sometimes they'll say, well, you know, I do this. So I don't understand why you have a problem with it. You know, they'll say something like, well, you know that I gamble or you know that I cheat or you know that I drink or, you know, do all these behaviors. And So why is this a problem for you? It's your fault. You made me do it. This is just the way I am. Something like that. Pretty common for highly narcissistic, highly toxic people. Number four, you seem awfully insecure. Funny thing, insecurities, (laughs) we all have them. Narcissists, however, will discover yours and shine the world's biggest spotlight on them while they fan the flames and actually make it worse. They'll be overly flirtatious, for example, with people and then give you a weird side eye and ask you why you have an issue. Narcissists will lower your self-esteem with their words and their actions. And once we're worn down so far that we can't build ourselves back up, things only get worse and worse. They cause jealousy and insecurity to present itself and then look at you sideways like this is all in your head and you're crazy. And this can be said in many ways. You're way too jealous. You're making a big deal out of this. I was just being nice. Why are you so insecure? What's your problem? And so on. If you would like to talk with me one-on-one and get some help and support for what you're going through from a survivor, you can click the link down in the description below to set up an appointment. If you want more information, you're always free to set up a session through an email. And you can always email bookachatwithjess at gmail.com if that's something that works easier for you. Number five, 
This is why no one likes you. An extremely hurtful and devaluing phrase said by many narcs, geared towards making you feel worthless and horrible about yourself, and typically uttered when you're trying to get them to have some kind of conversation or you know how it goes, survivor. At some point, you're asking them to be an adult and we just know how that's too much for them. They'll feel a need in the moment to knock you down a few pegs when they're incapable of standing up on their own two feet. And you'll hear something like, wow, you really needed to hear every single place I went to with my friends last night. Wow, (laughs) you sound like a lot of fun. See this? This is why nobody likes you. Geez, you just think you're so great, don't you? You're so smart and you know everything. This is why you don't have any friends, you insufferable know-it-all. They'll say things like that. Narcissists do consider their friends and their partners to, frankly, just be less than them. And they'll waste no opportunity to knock you down and remind you of this, that you are, in fact, beneath them. Some phrases will also make you feel scared and isolated. Mixed with some gaslighting, sometimes a narcissist can cause you to pull away from people, thinking that maybe these other people have a low opinion of you as well, and it can cause severe isolation, among other things. Number six, that's some really thin skin you have there. It's really funny coming from a narc who has like the thinnest skin on the planet, but you might hear something like, wow, it was a joke. You really need to learn how to let things go. Or, God, I was teasing you. You're a sensitive little thing, aren't you? Jeez. I'm sure we've all heard it. As a survivor, I certainly have. Being insulted and ridiculed and teased right into your face and then hearing, but it's just a joke. Can't you lighten up a little bit? Ha ha ha. It was supposed to be funny. Try that joke on them. (laughs) Shine a spotlight on one of their insecurities or critique something that they do and see how that goes for them. I guarantee that they've got some pretty thin skin and it won't just um, roll right off their back. Bet that won't happen. And this is another common line along with similar ones like, could you make this a bigger deal? You're really dramatic, which we discussed earlier in the video. Another reminder that you need to toughen up and deal with this treatment that you are enduring right now, and you better shut up and keep it moving. Number seven, you are really selfish. Do you hear that? It would be the pot calling the kettle. (laughs) Nothing like a narcissist telling you that you are in fact the selfish one in the relationship when you have given and given until you have nothing left and then magically you are supposed to come up with more. This line or any combination of it is meant to give you pause, make you step back and feel, again, like you are not doing enough and throw in some nice guilt and maybe that will push you into doing whatever it was that you didn't feel comfortable doing. Maybe you sign for that loan or the car or spend money you don't have, whatever the case may be. When you're told that you're selfish, most empaths take that pretty personally. They're pretty hurt by it. And most of them leap into action to try to make this really slighted little narcissist feel better. Guilt is used quite a bit. And if you have some issues with codependency, which a lot of people do when they get mixed up with a narcissist, guilt can make you really, I mean, really go out of your way for these absolute losers. And I know because it's worked on me. Number eight, I don't like that person slash I don't like those people. Narcissists need you to be very isolated from people like I just talked about a moment ago. And occasionally they'll drop phrases like this about how they don't like someone or a particular group that you know. And they might tell you that, well, your closest friends, you know, they talk shit about you, right? And they gossip about you. Or they'll say something like, you know, your family doesn't like you. And it's probably because your friends, family, whatever this group or person may be, has probably tried to defend you or let you know that you're in probably not a good spot with this person. And they'll say anything to see if they can get you to step away from people, literally anyone, your kids, your family, who knows. Narcs really need you to be on your own. If you have those who love and care about you on your side, it's harder for them to be able to manipulate you the way they want to. Honestly, you're much better for them when you're alone and scared and you don't know where to go. 
and it's just you. It's really important to try to keep as many other people around you as you can. Someone who can see what's happening, somebody who can't be swayed by the gaslighting, and maybe somebody who's willing to help you out. Number nine, I know better than you. The little ego of the narcissist just really needs their little blue ribbons of their the very bestest at everything in the world. They have huge egos, God complexes, and everything else that desperately need to hide that true inferiority complex they have underneath all this because they're so self-loathing. And they'll always let you know when they beat you in every game, if they correct you on something that you made a mistake on, they'll throw it in your face. You're stupid. You're not good enough. I told you I was going to beat you. I don't even know why you tried. And I giggle. I really do. I can't help it. I let these people have their sad little moments and their even sadder little wins because I guess I just understand how desperately they really need it. If I don't win at a game, if somebody points out a mistake that I make, it it doesn't ruin my day. I just truly don't care. But it really, really bothers these people. It's really transparent to me that people who think they know everything or they're so great or they're the best, in truth, know nothing. There's always somebody, regardless of what you do, there's somebody who's worse than you and there's someone who's better than you. And in fact, I subscribe to the idea that the smarter you are, you realize the less you actually know and the more questions that you ask. And I've been telling myself for years, wow, I think I woke up today more dumb than I actually was yesterday. And now I know less. And now I'm more curious about this. And now I have more questions. Already just assuming that you know it all. Well, we know what assuming does, don't we? Number 10, why do you keep bringing all of this up Ah, yes, what narcissistic relationship would be complete if they didn't get upset about you bringing things up that they do not want to talk about? And you might get this worded a little bit differently. Of course, you can tie in all these phrases and switch them out with other ones. Why are you still going on about this? We talked about this already. Aren't you over this? Something like that. Don't let anybody do this shit to you, by the way. You're not over something until you're damn good and ready to be over it, okay? Don't let someone tell you that the topic has been discussed when no solution or compromise has been reached. If no solution is reached, if no compromise has happened, then it doesn't matter how much it's been discussed. It's still a problem. It's still an issue. And never allow someone to make you feel like wanting to talk, getting an answer, or clarification is bad. Understand you're talking to a child who more than likely doesn't want to admit they had their hand in the cookie jar and now they want to make this your fault. Now they want to tell you, why aren't you over this? I gave you a half-assed apology. Why are you still bringing this up? We talked about me cheating on you a whole 10 minutes ago. Aren't you over it yet? The answer is no. No, I'm not. And maybe we won't get over some of these things, but don't let someone rush you along and push you along and tell you how they think you're supposed to feel. Because I guarantee you, if the shoe was on the other foot, they wouldn't be over it yet either. So go ahead and add to this list down in the comments section, Survivor, because there are dozens, like literally dozens of common phrases that come right from the playbook of predictable narcissists. Please like the video, consider subscribing for multiple videos each week on narcissistic abuse. It would mean the world to me if I could reach 100,000 surviving subscribers. Don't forget, have a great day, Survivor, and take care of yourself.